when we were shopping for uh, boats, especially the Bayliner 4788, oh gosh, that's like almost five years ago, years ago wow. when we were doing the shopping, we came across people who mentioned that they had put a hot tub on their deck of the Bayliner 4788, and we said, that needs to be asked for it. <laughs> Stand on the path that I've chosen straight up. Come my way and I'll see you at the top. Yeah, so we've done some research into it, and the, the roof apparently can handle the weight of a small two-person hot tub, um, because this, particularly, this part of the roof here of the top deck is where, um, you know, by normal configuration, this is where a crane and the dinghy would be on this model of boat. So ours was never configured that way. The original owner ordered it without the crane, has always had the dinghy off of the swim platform on the back. That's what we do. And he built uh, walls, up, little fiberglass walls around the edges. Uh, so we had this big open deck space the entire time. But yeah, we've tried putting a bistro there. We've tried maybe some uh, lounge chairs. chairs and and it just was never space that we used. And well, okay, on the pandemic, we decided <laughs> to live aboard the boat pretty much in one location with just some small side trips. And winter was coming. And, and it was stressy and, cold, you know, getting cold for Florida. So we're like, hot tub, maybe we could find one of these. And indeed, the, the inflatable um, uh, two-person hot tubs are um, available. There's actually not a lot of options as far as the two-person side. That was the biggest challenge we had was a lot of the inflatable hot tubs are big, round, four-person things that or wouldn't, square. or square, or wouldn't really fit up here. But we eventually tracked down this Aleco two-person oval inflatable tub on Amazon. On Amazon, very five hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, delivery in two days, and it's basically just plug it in, press a button, it's self-inflating. Something inflating on our porch. It's one of those Christmas things. It's one of those Santa inflating yeah. things. Santa's gonna be in hot water, I think. Huh. Goes from a big folded up thing to this tub, put water in it, turn on the heater, turn on the jets, and well, it takes about 24 hours to first heat up and then so, you, so you're annoyed for the first 24 hours <laughs> <Waiting. laughs> and then you finally get in. So we had this delivered right after Thanksgiving. It was actually a early Christmas gift from Chris's parents as they found guys. out that we Thank were you. shopping <laughs> for it. They said, that's our Christmas gift for you. So they uh, funded this uh Splurge, Splurge. <laughs> but five hundred dollars. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's priceless. <laughs> and and we used it almost every single day for the first couple months. It was just, just amazing. A treat. Uh, we're blessed at our dock um, in Sanford. We pretty much have no one else really around us. There's a lot of privacy there. That's been just fabulous. And we take the boat out up, up the in, little creeks and stuff like this. We're in protected waterways. We're not worried about water. Uh, the, the boat being the, top heavy and stuff. So we would drain it if we were going out in any place there was going to be significant waves and stuff this this does add it's um 140 gallons that it holds we go always on the lower and we probably have about 120 gallons in it and that's a lot of weight at what eight pounds a gallon i mean we, we've added 800 <laughs> to a thousand pounds onto the boat depending on how full we have it and uh that's that's, a lot of that's significant here. especially this high up on the boat so yeah. we would be concerned uh, if we were in heavy seas, not that we do heavy seas very often or ever, but like mm -hmm. if we were crossing to the Bahamas, we'd use the water maker to pull it when we get over there or yes. something like that. Uh -huh. But yeah, so it has been a treat. It heats up about a degree an hour at the dock and stuff and off of power. And we did it with our generator taking when we go out and anchor, It'd keep its temperature for a couple days or a day, mm -hmm. but then we'd be able to top it off with the generator and run it. But that was running a lot of generator time. So uh, we, uh, when we first kind of teased about the hot tub, someone mentioned that they had gotten a propane shower heater, basically for mm -hmm. camping, uh, to do quick heating. And so we, you dove yeah, into research. I dove into research. I found and took a little bit of experimentation to get the right set of parts and pumps and everything. Now we've got the ability to basically actually have it on a. Um, sorry, my arms getting tired. We have it on a, a, a series. So I can say, you know, you know, hey Siri, heat the turn on the hot tub heater, and. Is she gonna do it? Kind of fumbled that, but yeah, shame. Okay. But if I if I hadn't fumbled it, yeah, it would actually turn on. And right oh, oh, no, 
Okay, so there it goes. There it goes. Boom. <laughs> and it turns on that little um, submersible pump right down there, and suddenly hot, hot water comes in. We could heat up this tub in less than an hour. It's, you know, heats and really fast off of propane. That's great. And now we're in summer months where it's hotter. We'll be actually like starting out cold and then have the heat kind of rise with us. Uh -huh. It's been really nice out here. Okay, so um, the yeah. hot tub itself, um, the space up here was much better than we thought. We thought we were going to have to remove this table that the original owner put in. Yeah. Um, but it actually slides, it's on a sliding mechanism and it actually fits really well. So we didn't lose our dining space upstairs mm -hmm. and the hot tub just fits so nicely right here. It's large enough for the two of us. We pretty much have to either sit across from each other with our legs next to each other or kind of interlace, which is fine. It is perfectly large enough for one person. Uh, very yeah, it's, enjoyable. It's great for little private soaks to come up here one at a time or it's very comfortable for the two of us. And we have just enjoyed the heck out of this thing. Okay, so the hot tub itself, however, <laughs> the size is great, the inflatability is great, but the brains of it are pretty darn stupid. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yeah, it has, basically, well, it has no brain. It has actually just enough brain to be annoying. So when it's turned on and the filter's running, it's got an internal 165-hour countdown. And after that 165 hours is gone of the pump running, it just starts beeping to remind you to clean the filter. But... You can't reset it if in advance. If you clean the filter after 100 hours, there's no way to reset it. So you clean the filter after another 65 hours, the hot tub will just spontaneously start beeping. And that could be a, a little awkward if you, it's your neighbor who's calling to tell you that your boat's beeping while you're out on a van trip. They don't know if uh, <laughs> something else is going on in the boat. We're yes. serious. Um, so, and you would think, okay, well, fine, just unplug it or maybe, you know, uh, put a timer on it or something like that. So it, <laughs> nope, if you, it does not, the filter does not come on. Uh, by if, itself, it yeah. has to be manually turned. Yeah, off, if you so. if you use a, a yeah, basically pull the plug or use a timer to turn off the hot tub. If you turn the power back on, nothing is, comes back on. So you can't remotely turn on the heat, remotely turn on the filter. Um, so it's really kind of dumb. So that's actually our, our own little external pump and heat system is smarter than its uh, built-in brains. Yeah, because you can talk to your watch. And I turn can talk it to my watch and turn it uh, on. But yeah, <laughs> when we're at docking on power, we pretty much leave it on all the time. If we're going out on a van trip, we just turn, turn it, it off. off we usually even, we even drain it if we're gone for more than a few days and just refill when we get back. Yep. Now back to the weight issues. Mm -hmm. um, it does impact how the boat sits. Uh, we quickly found out with it being on this side of the boat, we sort of to <laughs> yeah, lean. Uh, we thought, well, what can we do to offset this? We thought, okay, well, maybe we'll get some ballast to put in there. And maybe we'll get a new anchor chain that's longer and use the old anchor chain on the other <laughs> side of the boat to counterbalance. We thought, wait a minute. No, we, we've we got have, pumps. We have two fuel tanks. And yes, we'll just shift our, our ratio of fuel tanks. So we lowered the fuel on one side and pumped it to the other. And... Um, that offset it really well. Uh, we do find, however, because this is on the back of the boat, um, and our fresh water tanks are in the bow of the boat, yes. and we have about 140, 160 gallons of fresh water that we can carry on the boat. Uh, we do notice that when it gets down below about half, we start to lean a little bit back. That's so, a reminder to refill the so fresh tanks. <laughs> we just have to keep up on keeping the fresh tanks full, and we are eventually going to get more anchor chain. Um, because we only have 120 <laughs> feet, and that's not going to be enough as we get further north up the coast. So we're definitely going to want more anchor chain anyway, and that will help with the balancing, keeping mm -hmm. it bow heavy. But it's not been a problem. We can get up on plane. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, the, 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 no problem. Yep. It, it doesn't really affect the maneuverability of the boat much at all. I'm sure it's putting a little bit of extra, you know, probably a slight impact on our fuel economy, but the boat is overall heavy. This is a tiny fraction of the and, weight and of it, the boat. And it's rated for lots of people to be on board. <laughs> and like we said, with the... Uh, uh, the original dinghy was supposed to be up yep. here, so a lot of that weight, maybe not quite as much as Hot Tub has, but a lot of this deck was designed for a lot of weight, yep. and it is over a uh, support loading um, the, wall. The wall it? underneath this yeah. area. So, so we feel, feel, you know, we feel this has been a wonderful upgrade. We feel very comfortable with it. We are just happier with it than we even imagined. So. No, yeah, we figured if it worked for a couple months in winter, that'd be worth it. <laughs> yes. But here we are. It's yep. June. And it's still, it does have a couple pin prick holes that you're constantly yeah. fixing. Yeah, I've had to patch it a couple times and it, you know, leaks a little bit of air. I wish this, Aleko, if you're listening, make, build, make this exact same thing, same size, just higher quality materials. Charge more for it. We'll Charge more. more. <laughs> it's worth it. Um, make it just higher quality materials, thicker um, walls, and a smarter brain. But overall... I see a sun almost down. Well, I think it's time, time for to us to, us to get, get in the hot tub. And yeah, the hot water is coming here. It should be 
Oh, yeah, it's about 90 degrees right now. And I tell you, traveling up and down the St. John's River with our hot tub is like being on a private spa retreat. <laughs> it has been amazing. Okay, let's get in the tub. Okay, yeah, let's quit talking about it. <laughs> Bye. We create these videos just for fun, and we love having you along for the ride. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.